is uh, Thomas. I'm uh, in the uh, MXNet application team at Amazon AI. And today I'm going to talk to you about um, MXNet Gluon performance tricks and how to visualize deep learning models. So it's very important when you're developing deep learning models to be able to optimize for speed or for accuracy in order to maximize uh, your utilization of your hardware. As we know, um, deep learning models are better trained on GPU, GPU are expensive, and it's very important to make sure that you're utili utilizing this hardware at uh, its uh, maximum capacity. And to be able to uh, do that, you first need to be able to measure it. So there will be one part where I'll talk about how we, you can uh, measure and visualize uh, the performance of your model, the performance of your hardware, and then we'll go into another part where I'll speak about how you can uh, make sure that your model is uh, utilizing all these resources. So uh, in the first part, I'm going to talk about visualizing deep learning. Second part is going to be performance tricks and gotchas. First, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, Apache MXNet history. So MXNet is a deep learning framework that you probably know already. And it was uh, created in 2015 by uh, students from um, the distributed machine learning community. In 2017, a new API was released for MXNet, which is called Gluon. It's at the uh, imperative API, and I will explain in a minute what imperative means. And these are the people from the uh, first authors uh, of the original uh, MXNet paper. And uh, in our group, we have uh, Muli, who is uh, now working for uh, AWS at Amazon AI, and is uh, directing the uh, MXNet science team. So when you have um, deep learning models, really what the deep learning model is, is a computational graph. So you have some data that you pass through a series of operations, and this is what defines your network. So historically, there's been two approaches to these computational graphs. First one that was most widely used was symbolic approach, where you would first um, define your network in a language, usually Python, but it could be a custom language or a JSON definition file or something like that, where you would define your uh, different operation, different steps. Then you would compile that network into an intermediate representation that would define um, every link of between each of the tensors at every step of your operation. And that is uh, intermediate representation that would be executed through an engine. So historically, that's how CAFE, TensorFlow, the first version of MXNet uh, worked. Uh, for example, if we look at this Keras code, uh, the model definition is done in Python. So you add all your layers, you define um, your inputs and your outputs. Then you compile this model, which is going to create this intermediate representation, and then you fit data to this model. So you pass in some training data, some uh, target training data, and it's going to optimize uh, the weights of your layers according to a given optimizer. So that's a traditional symbolic way. Then you have the imperative approach, which is um, also called defined by run, where that's a host language, um, traditionally Python, that would define every step of the execution. So instead of being um, predefined ahead of time, the execution flow is going to be driven by the host language. So that's how Gluon, MXNet Gluon works. That's how PyTorch or Chainer works as well. And at the definition step is no difference uh, from the symbolic one. You just uh, create a network, you add your layers, and then you, when you want to train your network, that's where it's different. So here, you don't give your bunch of data and then call fit you're driven every step of the optimization. So in that case, we're looping for a certain number of uh, epochs. And in each epoch, we um, we uh, pass batches of data. Uh, we get the output of your network, get the loss, and then do a backward propagation of our gradients with respect um, of our, to, to update our parameters with respect to the loss. And uh, that's what the trainer.step uh, does it updates each parameter of our network according to a given uh, optimizer uh, rule, 
um, to minimize uh, the loss. So, why why is one better than the other? So, when you think about symbolic, um, the advantage of symbolic networks is because your network is defined ahead of time, you can do uh, all sorts of optimization. You can reuse um, a memory area that you know are not going to be used anymore. You can combine operation to fuse some operators and get like uh, performance boosts. Um, so you can really do what's called graph optimization. And when you have a very big graph like the one that's uh, here, uh, that the inception uh, network graph, you can see there is lots of opportunity for uh, simplifying and uh, optimizing operations here. However, um, for Gluon, why imperative is uh, better than symbolic, it's especially at the research and prototype phase. It's extremely fast to prototype because you don't have to compile your network, test it to see whether it's working or not. You can uh, very quickly debug through your uh, code because every execution comes back to Python. So you can plug in a debugger. So there is a good uh, talk I'll, I'll mention in a minute that you can uh, check on YouTube where I really explain how you can even plug a remote debugger onto your EC2 instance, for example, that has a GPU enabled to, to really see what each layer is doing. So not only you can look at the shapes of your tensors, but you can look at the values, at the gradients. You can plot heat maps of gradients updates uh, live in your code. So that's, that's a massive advantage of uh, imperative um, frameworks. And really the unique selling point of Gluon is you don't even have to do first in imperative mode and then write a symbolic version, it's, it's hybridizable. What that means is when you're ready, you've uh, debugged your network, it's training pretty well. What you can say is, okay, now starts recording the operations. So each operation is recorded in a symbolic form and then that is symbolic graph that's uh, being executed in the um, subsequent um, batches. So the first batch you record what's happening and then the next batches it's using this recorded uh, cached operations to improve the speed and optimize uh, the graph execution. So that's really, really great because you, you get best of both worlds. You get the debugability and the speed and performance of Symbolic. Um, like I mentioned, there is a, a YouTube tutorial, so uh, Gluon debugging on Amazon EC2. That was done by my colleague Sina, and it really goes in details how you can uh, debug your Gluon scripts. And I really recommend checking it out. So now let's speak about uh, visualizing deep learning. For example, what you see here, that's a, um, something called the Deep Dreams, where this was a, a paper by Google, where instead of uh, using gradient descent to optimize the weight of the network, they optimize the input to maximize the activation of some specific layers. And that very interesting um, results here, because uh, you really show that your network is trying to find patterns and then you can maximize the uh, position of these patterns on your images and you see it's a way of visualizing what the network is learning. So that that's on the side of interpretability but today I'm going to talk to you about visualizing performance so that's quite quite a bit different. So first thing you want to do when you have a deep learning network is to visualize the architecture to make sure you're building the network that you want. And in MXNet, there are several ways of achieving that. The first one I want to show you is uh, simply, uh, I'm going to put a, a notebook, a Jupyter notebook, and I'm going to show you a few different ways of achieving that. So first step, uh, we're going to restart this notebook and start from scratch. So first we import MXNet, uh, then a few more imports, but like traditional um, and things, uh, traditional modules like time multiprocessing, uh, NumPy. An important one I want to mention here is MXBoard. That's a plugin for TensorBoard, which is a really nice utility developed by the TensorFlow folks, but we have a plugin for it. So you can plug all your data from MXNet into MXBoard. Then a few seeds for repeatability, and uh, let's see how we can visualize our network. So here on this line, I'm getting a AlexNet uh, model 
from the model zoo. So I get the predefined uh, architecture of AlexNet, initialize it, and then the first way to visualize your network is just to print it. So the string description of your Gluon block or your Gluon network tells you, looks through all the different properties and tells you what kind of layers are there. It doesn't describe the flow because as we say in Gluon, the flow is defined by Python, but it tells you what blocks are available. And in that case, we have one block which is features and it's a hybrid sequential which means each of these layers are going to be executed in this order. So we have some convolutional layers. We can see the kernel size, the stride, the padding. It is very informative to know what uh, layers are available in a given block. The second way, if we want um, the information flow information, uh, the data flow information is to use the mx.viz package. So there are two functions here I'm going to show you. First one is plot network. Plot networks takes a symbol. So to, to get a symbol, it's as easy as passing a symbol through the network. So we get uh, back the uh, symbolic representation of the execution here. And one really nice thing is you can specify shapes. So we're going to say that our data is a given shape. So that's the shape that we're going to use later, which is 3 by 224 by 224. And then, because it's using GraphViz, you can just pass any, any GraphViz flag that you want. So if you're familiar with this library, it's a graph visualization library, and you can really play around. So we run this, and we see uh, at every step the size of our feature maps. So our input is the RGB images uh, with uh, the RGB channel first. Then we see we have a first convolution, 11 by 11, and a stride of 4 by 4. And we see that the resulting feature maps, uh, and we have 64 of these convolution uh, filters. Um, so we see 64 output feature maps of 55 by 55. And just like that, you can really go down your network and visualize what's happening with the different sides of your um, layers. And it's very interesting if you want to debug uh, your, your network before even training anything. The second uh, function that's very interesting in the um, Viz package is a print summary. So same thing, you just pass in a symbol and a shape. And what I really like here is the number of parameters. So it tells you for each layer how many parameters are necessary to uh, store the weight information. And Sometimes it's not obvious when you're creating a network. You say, okay, I'm just going to use 4,000 in a unit or 512 convolu um, convolutional layers, uh, convolutional kernels. But uh, when you see here, for example, that in the um, AlexNet uh, network, this fully connected um, 4,000 uh, hidden unit to 4,000 hidden units, that requires 16 million parameters. So that's quite enormous. Um, being able to visualize number of parameters per layer also helps you adjust when you see some, um, for example, if you see overfitting in your network. When you realize that you have a small data set and your network has uh, hundreds of millions of parameters, then it's going to be likely to overfit. So very interesting again to debug and to get a better grasp of what your network is and what your network will do. So the next way to visualize the network is to use MXBoard. So MXBoard, as I say, is a plugin for TensorBoard, a great utility built by the TensorFlow people. And it works with a summary writer, which is the handle that we're going to pass all our data to be written to. And to do that, we are um, going to do add graph, and we're going to pass the, um, the uh, network to it. And that's what we get. We get the description of the AlexNet uh, network. And you can zoom in and out, see the different layers. It's not as featureful as other tools, but I think it's always good. It's very easy to do, so it's always good to have it um, as part of your other TensorBoard uh, metrics. Uh, if you need a quick look at your architecture, that's, that's a good way to do that. The um, other tool I want to uh, talk to you about is uh, Netron. So this is a different network than the Inception uh, V3 network I was mentioning earlier. And Netron is one of the main advantages of Netron is accepts any uh, framework 
modules almost. So you can do TensorBoard, PyTorch, MXNet, Onyx, uh, MXNet model server, all sorts of different um, model definition uh, files. And you can really dive deep um, and find the kernel, the layouts, the number of filters, the padding of every layer. And if you use some uh, model definition file that also contains the parameters, you can also dive into the values of each parameters. So for example, for MXNet, that would be the .model file that we use for MXNet model server. So you can check that out if you're interested. OK. so. To summarize, first way to visualize a network is to use uh, just a print function of your Gluon model. So that would give you every block and a description of each block. The number two method is to use the symbolic visualization tool. So plot network will give you uh, the let you visualize the architecture of your network in a graphical way. And print summary, where the main advantage over the previous method is to be able to see the number of parameters per layer. Uh, Netron is an online tool that you can uh, drag and drop your model files and then analyze it. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'd recommend it. And MXBoard uh, supports graph visualization as well. So now that we, that was the first step, kind of the primary step is to know your model. The next step is to be able to visualize the performance of your uh, network. So to do that, you, one very important thing is to be able to visualize your GPU um, uh, performance. The tool I use for that is called GPU Monitor. It's available on GitHub under that name. Uh, just Google it. It's built by a um, friend and ex-colleague of mine, uh, Matthew Salvaris, and uh, it really does what it says. You, it lets you monitor your GPU. You see the memory utilization, the I, memory I.O. and the GPU utilization in a, in a graph way. And it's all uh, powered by InfluxDB and Grafana, so it makes it very flexible. So because seeing like instant value is usually not enough, it's very important to visualize uh, patterns across time so you can take actions to uh, correct any issues you have. For CPU and RAM, I use uh, HTOP. Um, thanks, uh, François Xavier, who I mentioned that in a previous delivery of the talk. And it's actually really good. You see uh, each CPU, how much it's used, how much is uh, idle. And it really lets you diagnose when you're not using your, your CPU uh, in, the, in the most efficient manner. So now that we know how to visualize our hardware performance, let's see how we can visualize our model performance. So MXBoard, I mentioned earlier, uh, lets you visualize all sorts of data. So you have graph data, you have scalars, histograms, embeddings, images, texts, uh, audio, uh, precision recall curves. It's, it's very uh, featureful, but the main one that's uh, for me the most important one maybe is a scalar. So scalar, uh, that's a little uh, spoiler here. I'm going to uh, show you how we can optimize uh, the performance. So here what you're seeing is the uh, accuracy and you see as we add more uh, performance tricks we get same accuracy but a lot faster than um, in the previous runs so when you're doing experiments where you change a few hyperparameters it's very useful to keep track of pre of every run and to be able to compare them because uh, sometimes you might run faster but they get lower accuracy and playing with uh, steps as i'll show you in a minute is very um, interesting whether you want to see it relate, relative or uh, uh, aligned. So if you look at oh, the second way to, to look at your data is uh, through MXBoard images. So that's not useful for every use case. But if you're training a model, for example, in that case, that's us say um, intern I was mentoring, Jonathan, was uh, working on um, recognizing handwritten text. And one of the first steps to do that was to segment each line of the text and to know whether the model was training. If you just look at the loss of the uh, image uh, object detection model, it doesn't really tell you if it's working at all. So one of the very nice uh, way I found to make sure that the model was training was to send every few epoch, uh, send the predicted bonding box to MX board. And that way you get a very um, visual way to to monitor the progress of your network. So that's, that's something also that really helps you um, 
because here all I'm talking about is to make you faster when you're doing deep learning, especially with Gluon. So the, the faster you know whether your model is training, whether your loss is decreasing, or your accuracy is improving, or how fast you can iterate through your experiments, that's what's going to make you uh, faster and use your resources more efficiently. And last but not least, let's not forget to write um, debug output to the console. So the console, for me, I just use it. I, I put like um, the loss, the number of batches, the uh, time, samples per second, and I find it very useful to have a, a smoke test of, you know, the, the loss is actually decreasing, or oh, the samples per second is in a reasonable number. I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, before doing any any fancy graphing, that's the first thing you need to do is to have like some some logs that are uh, useful in your use case. So now we've had an overview of all the things we need to look at when our model is training let's actually see now how we can act act on our training script and get some performance out of it <laughs>